For the past 15 years, the world has faced an unprecedented spike in illegal wildlife crime, according to the World Wildlife Fund. According to the UN, the poaching and selling of exotic animals as pets, or for their body parts, generates up to $23 billion a year, making it the fourth most lucrative illegal trade after narcotics, human trafficking and counterfeiting. Zoonotic diseases make up about 75% of all emerging infectious diseases for humans, including the virus that causes COVID-19. The mishandling of the pangolin is believed to be a potential source of coronaviruses. The 2020 report by the UN Office on Drugs and Crime states that seizures of pangolin scales increased tenfold between 2014 and 2018, a sign experts say that inaction against illegal wildlife trade is not an option. Now the chances of this happening again are most likely high since we see unregulated markets, even regulated markets, continuing to launder illicit wildlife and this is really uh, a threat to all of us because the last thing we want is to have another uh, pandemic. In the Arabian Peninsula, cheetahs are highly sought after, typically taken from the Horn of Africa, priced up to $15,000 per live creature on the black market. The UN states that nearly five out of six cheetah cubs taken from the wild die during illegal trade. The UAE became the first Arab country to ban the trade and private ownership of wild animals in 2017. Many Gulf countries followed suit, yet people in the region continue to openly own and trade exotic animals. In the UAE, the Al Ain Zoo has taken in more than 200 rescued wild animals, including primates and carnivorous felines, many of which have been trafficked and arrive with severe physical and psychological trauma and need of rehabilitation, which can take months to accomplish. According to the UN, 53 cheetahs were rescued in the UAE between 2005 and 2019. I had the pleasure of meeting two of them, one and a half year old Rad and Bassam, rescued last year by local authorities. They were found in poor health due to mishandling during transport. One of the first steps needed to help them recover, say their caretakers, was changing the cheetah's perception of humans. This bad experience obviously makes them think that all humans are bad. So we try to rebuild this trust through a positive reinforcement behavioral training. And this is mainly uh, rewarding the animal for the positive behavior. So gradually this is trust built again. But without this trust with, between the animal care staff and this animal, you cannot really move forward. With trust restored, caretakers could now begin the enrichment stage, rehabilitating the health and natural instincts of these wild creatures, the fastest land mammals, to run, look for food, and socialize naturally. The Al Ain Zoo is also looking to strengthen wildlife populations through conservation and breeding. Among its almost 4,000 animals of more than 200 species are those in need of conservation, such as the longhorned addox, the dama gazelle, and the Arabian sand cat. A small, shy appearing desert feline, genetic breeding is part of the survival of the local species, says Al Ain Zoo's conservation unit head. The team began research on the cat's genetic makeup in 2013, and I was shown how negative traits threatening the feline survival can be identified and then bred out to strengthen population numbers. Their research is finding the Arabian sand cat's closest genetic relatives to breed with and increase their numbers while still maintaining their genetics. It informed us that the Arabian sand cat and the Asian sand cat have little differences when it comes to the genetic uh, site. Uh, and for us, knowing that, uh, we can think of them as one population. The Al Ain Zoo now has about 24 Arabian sand cats and hopes that this number will grow, along with the understanding of visitors about the importance of protecting animals, meant to be wild and free. Mm -hmm.